Similar though. Hello there everyone, welcome back to another video. Uh, I was lucky to get out today um, to this this big old field in the middle of nowhere in Northamptonshire. Um, I'm out with Owen Albion Camping who you saw on my Halloween video recently and he's got permission to come here so uh, I thought well, it was ideal to test something out like what I want to here. Um, could bring the truck right in, off-road it up here and uh, it's perfect. Uh, we come here yesterday is why you've uh, seen me open the video with cooking breakfast. Uh, it was starting to get dark and yesterday was terrible weather wise. Um, it was just coming down. It was soaking wet. The ground here is all sodden and muddy. Um, we had a, a tarp up by the uh, truck over here so it was okay. We had a fire going. No problems but to film yeah it, was, it wasn't gonna work. <laughs> um, yeah, so what I did last night was kind of test out the shelter, the uh, One Tigris Smoky Hut. It's a hot tent and um, it did well. Um, as I said, it was hammering it down and uh, it stayed dry. I had the stove on in there and um, no issues at all. I had it on pretty much all evening um, whilst we were sat out here uh, before I got in it, just to kind of dry run things before I got in there um, but yeah all was good uh, cooked up some roast pork on the Dutch oven so that was very nice <laughs> um, yeah so I just wanted to kind of open the video really here and um, just say it's a different sort of camp for me really truck camping uh, so I could bring whatever I wanted so um, like the truck is literally 10 feet from me here um, so it was easy to bring the uh, the tent stove out and everything um, this tent is is a super lightweight tent it's um 1.2 kilos for the outer here so yeah it's very very light um a little bit more when you've got the inner as well but you wouldn't use the inner when you're hot tenting like this um yes yeah, so i'll stop yabbering on i will um go over the tent a bit more detail in a bit um if you have a bits and bobs to do around camp in the meantime Another good thing about coming on this um, truck camping trip, um, being able to take whatever I want, is that I can bring this out, which I've been meaning to try out. It's an all powers uh, solar generator, they call it. So basically a giant um, sort of power bank and uh, inverter. It's just got everything you need on it, basically from 12 volt, AC power, DC power, USB. It's absolutely brilliant. I can charge anything I want to out here now. And I thought I'd bring out the um, solar panel that they sent me as well to try out. So this setup would be ideal for doing something like this, or if I'm on a multi-day trip, maybe going to Scotland, down to Cornwall like I did recently, that sort of thing. Um, I can get all my kit and camera and everything, um, head torch, phone, everything all charged up on the go. Um, I've had it running at home already. It's kind of like a bit of a leisure battery as well. And I've run a 50-inch TV off it, um, a um, satellite box, 
whilst I've been charging my phone and um, you know all different bits and bobs so it's a pretty powerful bit of kit um, 78,000 milliamp hour I believe um, yeah it's, it's, it's a brilliant bit of kit I'll, I'll link it below but I'm going to do a, a proper video on this one so I'm just kind of bringing it out to sort of try out today and um, it is charging and it's charging everything at the same time so it is all working great Before I take a closer look at the smoky hut tent from one tigress here, I thought I'd set up the um, hex pig next to it, seeing as I could bring what I wanted in the truck. <laughs> so I brought this along as well, just so you can see a bit of a comparison. The camera is a bit closer to the one tigress here, uh, but it is 230 mil taller, 23 centimeters taller than the um, hex peak, and the zip, the opening, the door does go a little higher as well. Um, you can also open up this side and roll it up too, so you've got a bigger opening at the front. Um, so you can see there is definitely a size difference. Um, the base size, um, I don't know off the top of my head so I'll put it on the screen, is quite a lot bigger on here as well. Um, the other difference though is the fact that this weighs nearly twice as much as the outer for the hex peak. This is 1.2 uh, kilos and this is like 660 grams I believe. Um, obviously that's going to be a bit different once you're adding the pole and if you're using the inner and that. Um, whereas with this I tend to use a trekking pole, you'd need an extender for this for that height. Um, but it does come with its own pole and it is alley I think, so it's nice and light. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to show them next to each other. Um, and I also, as soon as this stove's cooled down from cooking my breakfast nearly two hours ago, I want to try the inner from this in here. Um, because that inner is like a two-thirds inner, whereas the one for this is a um, full inner that you can't use with the stove. So I was just curious to see if it would fit in there just for an option. And I've got the, um, the bathtub as well, so give that a go just out of curiosity. The Smoky Hut has these vents on the top, similar to the Hex Peak, um, which are great as one front and back. Um, you can't really reach the back one unless you have the door open and reach around because of the height and distance of the kind of pyramid. Um, these are great and all, but they don't have any kind of spacer inside. So what I've been doing is just using this little splinter from um, chopping wood just to do that. Um, and that's because I've got the stove in there, so there's a lot of heat. Uh, this is muddy ground, a lot of moisture. I want to get you know as much of that sort of condensation out as possible and smoke if I do get any back smoke from the uh, stove door. So yeah, um, that's really the only negative I can really think of is um, that it should have the same sort of thing as the hex peak, a little spacer there. Of course the main reason I wanted this tent uh, was to have a hot tent and uh, the main feature of that is the stove jack point here. Uh, as you can see the, um, the flap that is normally on there if you want to use it ordinarily uh, that just velcros down, rolls down and um, when you want to have your uh, your chimney coming out, you need some kind of stove jack. This one I have made is Velcro sewn onto a silicon baking sheet. Um, I've got the idea from Simon, a bloke in the woods, he's done the same on his one of these tents. You should check out that video as well, I'll link it below because um, he uses a, a heat gun to test as well. Um, but yeah, it seems to be working fine. You can buy stove jacks as well. Um, I did bring my, my big... Um, one that I used on the shelter, the big silicon ceiling one, because obviously this has a little bit of a gap around it. Um, yes, it was raining last night. Not a lot come through here at all, this small gap around. And what did come around just went on top of the stove and immediately uh, just turned to steam. So <laughs> it was no biggie at all. Um, but yeah, I'll show you the inside of here. Um, obviously you can move the chimney around a bit to get it right in the middle of the hole. Uh, it was touching at times last night and there was no issues with it um, sort of burning or melting or anything like that. It did just fine and was super cheap. This is just to show you um, what it's like inside. Uh, there is space to the side of me there um, where my sleep system is, where a pack would go. Tons and tons of space this other side of this stove here. 
So um, yeah, just loads and loads of room, bags of room. It does feel a lot roomier than the Hex Peak, I must admit. I love my Hex Peak, and that's always going to be my lightweight go-to, but um, for a hot tent, this is fantastic. I've put the inner in, taken everything out and got that in, because the pole has to go within the inner itself. And um, yeah, I've not got it very great. I'm on very muddy ground, the pole's sinking. It's very hard to get this perfect right now because of the conditions we had yesterday and last night. Um, but yeah, as you can see, the inner has quite a lot of room. Basically the whole of the tent there. Um, it's very nice. And all I've done is put it on to show you. And now it's filthy and muddy and I'm going to have to clean it. <laughs> so yeah, it's a little baggy here and there. That could be to do with the way I've done it today because of, yeah, because of this mud everywhere. Um, but it's good to see it. It's good to see it. I'm going to... Um, try the Hex Peak one next, um, just out of curiosity really. This is the um, half inner for the uh, Hex Peak that I brought with me. Um, it, yeah, it does look saggy. I think with some tightening up and fettling you probably could get it usable in here. Uh, so just in case you have a Hex Peak and you buy one of these, you know, it's an option for you. Um, could do with some halfway tie outs really, but it is what it is. Um, yeah, just wanted to give it a go out of curiosity to be honest. Um, but yeah, I think you could do it better than what I have here. It's just so horrible and muddy. <laughs> Everything's gonna need cleaning. So I'm gonna get this back to how it was and uh, pre cook some lunch. <laughs> if you're interested in uh, getting a smoky hut by One Tigress for free, Stay tuned till a bit later in the video and uh, we'll do a little giveaway. Papery, but it feels a little damp. Let's see. This is uh, just some water that I'm going to warm up to put in this um, ready mix dough that I've made at home for some bread. And um, I've just put a tablespoon and a half of butter in there just so that melts down and mixes in nice and easily with the warm water with the bread and yeast and salt. my uh, flour salt yeast mix here and I've warmed my uh, butter and water. I'm not going to put it all in at once just because every batch of flour is different etc. Just give that, cut it in with a butter knife so it comes together. I'll uh, stick the recipe to this bread in the uh, description. It's, it's nothing special, it's just a normal white bread mix. 
seems okay. And I have washed my hands. So it's time to bring it together and knead. You can see this coming together now, this dough, and it starts to uh, clean the inside of the bowl as well. Now it'll be almost ready for proofing in the uh, Dutch oven, which I'll uh, put near the fire, but not over it, just so it's nice and warm and helps the proofing of the dough. There she goes for 45 minutes to an hour. All right, it's been a little while. Wow, so that is proved. <laughs> That's way more than double in size. What I'm gonna do is knock it back. I could just bake it. It doesn't have to be perfect. What you ordinarily would do is knock it back um, so it hasn't got massive air pockets in it and then let it prove again before baking it. But I might just go for it, stick some coals on top, stick it over the fire and uh, we're, we'll be good. I've um, just prepared some kindling and some uh, bigger fuel for the stove later on. So we've got quite a lot of firewood to get through tonight because I don't really want to take it home. <laughs> right, I know this has caught on the top a bit because I didn't knock it back and it was just too big basically. But other than that it should be alright. Well here we go. Slightly burnt on the top bread. It was a bit of a rush. Uh, hopefully it is baked through. Because this is my very, very, very late lunch. <laughs> having some of that basically in a sandwich. It's got some stuffing in there too. Mm, a long time coming this. Oh, we've still got some of the uh, meat string. Bon appetit. It's a well earned sandwich. Been a busy old day filming and the like, and um, just got a cup, cup of tea on at the moment. Uh, haven't actually shown Owen yet this trip. Hey, <laughs> having a good one? Definitely, yeah, it's been really nice. Nice just chilled one. Yeah, definitely. And Owen is sleeping in his cave, it's a snug pack cave, it is. which uh, I'll give you a little show. Is it a free man? Four. Four man? Four man if you're close to the men. 
But uh, it is a good sized tent. The vestibule on both ends. Go on, man. the inside so too comfortable free at a push isn't it <laughs> yeah very nice it's good for me and the missus yeah dark now and uh, that makes me think of dinner <laughs> so I've had the Dutch oven warming up it's uh, got some oil in it already and I'm basically doing the same as what I did last night just with a different meat so I've just half some potatoes to go in and uh, I'll give them a little mix in a sec and uh, yeah, so it's kind of roast potatoes and roast meat. Let's get this off to get some meat in there. And a crown of turkey. In there quite nicely. It's actually still a bit frozen <laughs> from, what, from yesterday because it's been quite cold. So uh, we'll see how that does. doing here. I'm not sure how long it's been, maybe half hour if that. So yeah we're cooking away nicely, that turkey's looking good, as are the potatoes. You can see on the lid here a piece of clay, very clay the uh, ground here. I keep picking it up with the coals by accident thinking it's an ember. Oh, I'm stuck. <laughs> You live there now. <laughs> <laughs> yep. That is perfect. Roasties and roast turkey. Make some gravy and we're done. So we appear to be pretty cooked. Woo! That looks freaking lovely. Crown of turkey. Absolutely perfect. And some really nice looking roast potatoes. So I'm just going to carve off some of this. Oh yes, crispy on top. <laughs> There's so much more than I need right now but I'm saving it. That's the good thing about uh, winter camp cooking is you can uh, keep it because it's like a fridge out here anyway. Looks like it's going to get to zero-ish tonight which is it's fine for keeping your food so I can take it home and enjoy it. So uh, I will move these spuds aside Put this back in here for the moment and bring these babies out. Oh, they are perfect. That will do for the minute. Here I have some gravy. 
Oh yes. And some bread from earlier. Feast. Absolute feast. So I will enjoy this. Mmm. Mmm. Turkey is delicious. As are the potatoes, absolutely perfect. So I guess it's probably another week yet before this, <laughs> after this video goes out, but happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> As it's a turkey dish, why not? Let's call it a Thanksgiving. No pumpkin pie or whatever. Or sweet potato mash with marshmallows on top. What's that all about? That's bizarre. Mm. That was bleeding beautiful. I am stuffed. Right, so I'm in the tent now. Got the stove going nice. You might hear it in the background popping away. Um, it is very warm in here. I'm actually quite warm in just this shirt. I've got my uh, candle holder, my Nagualero candle holder as I'm calling it, on the go, because there's enough space in here, it's, it's absolutely fine. And they put out quite a lot of light. I've also got my um, new um, UCO Sprout light up the top there as well isn't quite as bright as I hoped but um, it gives you just enough just enough uh, light to get on with things but uh, I do like uh, natural light uh, got a few bits of wood to keep the stove going for a bit it's not something I was going to be doing overnight I've got um, carbon monoxide alarm definitely something you should uh, have if you're doing this sort of thing um, yeah but it's cosy so uh, I'll uh, get into my sleeping bag I did find last night I got in with just the t-shirt on and when the fire went down and that I woke up a bit cold and put on the um, fleece what I have with me so I'll probably do that before this time just have a sleeping bag open for a while but yes I'm cozy and ready for bed so uh, see you in the morning
perfect. Well, good morning, people. It's our uh, second morning here, and uh, just done breakfast, as you've just seen. Uh, it was chillier last night. Uh, skies were a bit clearer than the night before. It was just pouring down, so it did get down. I probably got down to zero, I would guess. It was about uh, one degree uh, before we went off to bed. Um, nice toasty night though, in fact it did get rather hot in there at one point. I had to open the uh, door a little bit. But that's kind of management with the stove really, because uh, it's only a certain amount of space. So it takes a bit of management. But I've been very happy with this tent, I am loving it. You're going to see a bit more of this. Maybe not always with the uh, stove, but definitely going to use it more. Um, yeah, stick around and uh, enter the competition because it's a great tent and uh, I look forward to giving it one of you guys. That's why I've not done a special video just for a giveaway. I want one of you guys, one of you subscribers to have it. So yeah, get in them comments. I'll tell you how in a moment. But um, yeah, we've eaten. Uh, I've already taken down the stove and that and uh, we're uh, going to get off shortly and uh, do a little off-roading out of here. Uh, thanks to, thanks Owen for inviting me along. Cheers, thanks for coming. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I'll see you guys later. I'll just leave you with a few nice images of us getting out of here. Goodbye. Like I said earlier, um, you got a chance to win the exact same tent as this, brand new, unopened of course. It's both the outer that you see here and the inner that you saw earlier in the video that I put up. Uh, if you have a chance to win this, all you need to do is in the comments just write that I'm in. That's all you got to do and um, I'll pick a winner in a week, maybe two, um, probably two weeks, see how long. And I'll make a video announcing who the winner is. Um, but yep, that's the outer, the inner. The poles, the pegs, all the uh, kit and kabam. All you don't get is the um, stove jack. If you want to use a stove with it, you'll have to make or buy one. So yeah, comment below. I'm in. I'll pick a winner in two weeks. Good luck. <laughs>